How's it going, you guys? Welcome to episode 11 of Tank Chats. Today, we're going to be taking a look at... And guys, as usual, we're getting the shout out of the way. Today, we're taking a look at the B3A1. Quite a mouthful there, but this is a uh, armored recovery vehicle based off the EZA German tank. So with that, you guys know the drill. We're going to hop into the history of this vehicle and then get into the tour. So we're getting into the history of this vehicle, guys. So the development of this vehicle first started in 1943. They wanted an uh, armored car vehicle that could like recover Shermans and other tanks in the inventory that the U.S. had during World War II. This development came out in 1945. This variant right here came out in 1945. It's based off the M4A3E8 Sherman. And you'll see why when we get to the side of the vehicle, why it's uh, based off that. So this tank was used uh, towards the end of World War II. And, but mainly saw its big use in Korea. Korea, um, this tank was used, like I said, as an ARV, an armored recovery vehicle. Um, where this tank actually struggled, well, not really a tank, armored recovery vehicle struggled to actually lift some of the uh, heavier vehicles uh, in the inventory during the Korean conflict, such as uh, the M26 Pershing and the M46 Patton. So, because of the lighter weight of this vehicle and its towing capacity, it had a little bit harder time towing the vehicles in Korea. By about, by the end of the Korean War, these vehicles realized that it was obsolete, and uh, they started facing the mountain, but they were loaned it out to Israel and Mexico, where Israel and Mexico continued to use these until the 1990s. Mexico used them until their variants of tanks, and then one of the actual common stories of this one was actually was used by the Israelis to tow their M51 Super Shermans. So that's the Sherman we talked about in the last video that was outgunned with a 105. Um, these would be used to recover those vehicles. So it's used like during the Six Day War, Yom Kippur War, and like various conflicts up until the 1990s. Phased out. With that, you guys, that does it on the history. With that, we're gonna hop right into the tour. Let's take a dive deep. Alright, so hopping right into the tour, you guys. The big obvious thing about right here is the big plow in the front. So like I said, this was designated as a recovery vehicle. On this plow, it was being stretched over the seas like major recovery for American needs and then all the process and stuff like that. Um, it's basically like a state sherm. So uh three caliber machine gun, which is where the co-driver slash radio operator would sit, your driver would sit there. So this vehicle would actually have a crew of four, unlike the EZ8, which would have five. Then there would be, I think, uh, Gunner slash loader and then the commander in the vehicle. You got your blackout marker lights right here and your front headlights right there. Your arm bolt lifting plugs. You got your front fenders right here. This is a mount for extra like engineer engineer tools like shovels, picks, anything like that. And obviously you got your tow cable here on the front, which had a uh, which this winch up here, you get a shot of that, it had the towing capacity of about uh, 10 tons, 10 10 tons. And then you got your bush guards on here to cover your marker lights. And this uh, armored recovery vehicle was outfitted with about a little more than the standard Sherman, about maybe, let's say, say like 60, 63 millimeters of frontal armor. So it was sloped, so it was a little more effective, but not, not too much. The Shermans weren't heavily armored. You got a uh, your iron bolts here, your cast iron bolts that help uh, access the transmission, the power pack in there. And that pretty much does it for the front, you guys. Um, with that, we'll hop into the uh, turret, quote unquote, and crew positions. All right, so hopping up here into the uh, turret. It's not actually a turret. You can see it's pretty much just a cast iron spot on top of the vehicle. It's right here. This will be your commander's hatch. You can see it's vision slit right here. It's vision ports. And uh, the big obvious thing that she's still got here She's got the 50 cal on there. So that's what uh, would be the secondary part of this vehicle would be the 30 cal machine gun, the 30 cal machine gun. Um, I think in that hatch right there, or somewhere out here, I actually don't know. So somebody correct me in the comments, but this is actually also an 81 millimeter mortar in it, because it did not have a cannon. This was not a tank, it was an armored recovery vehicle. So what would happen is there would be an 81 millimeter mortar in here, a 50 cal and then a 30 cal. Because obviously this isn't a turret. Gunner, 
I guess you could say. This should be the spot for your foot. engineer guy, I don't know, I actually don't know. Like I said, it's an armored recovery vehicle. So, and then down there, you see, is where your driver would be, right there, where the cameraman is. And on the other side is where the co-driver slash radio operator would be. So that would be, like I said, it had a 10 short tons, so about 9.1 tons towing capacity. Like I said, it struggled with some of the heavier vehicles used during the Korean War, but uh, it was effective during World War II towards the end to help uh, recover vehicles. You also look on the side of the turret, uh, turret quote unquote, there's extra track links on the side there. And uh, that pretty much covers it for the top of us. Uh, turret quote unquote. So with that, we're gonna hop down and get to the side. All right, so as I said, what designates this as a M32B3A1 is Got your front drive sprocket right here. Then you got your space, you got your mounts here for end connectors, and the duck bills for the spacers. Because this was a, uh, like I said, it was the E8 suspension, so it was meant to be wider tracked. Um, and actually, we'll take a look in here. These stove boxes still open up. There's still some uh, parts and stuff in here from the vehicle. Not sure exactly what they are, but uh, all of these do still open. I'll get a shot of that. Got two more here. And there, there's an extra towing mount actually right here for the vehicle. As well as, you got this stowage box up here. So on here, they can put anything they want, extra equipment, rations, extra tools, things like that. And just like they see on today's vehicles, this is actually a mount right here for a fire extinguisher. So this is where the fire extinguisher would be. And on this vehicle, they actually have step-up spots right here. So it make it easier to access one of this vehicle. You got uh, another iron bolt lifting plug back here. Mounts for extra tools. And then, of course, a big crane and winch. So that pretty much does it for the side, you guys. With that, we're going to hop into the back. All right, so hopping into the back of the vehicle, you guys. Right here, obvious signs. You got stowage boxes right here. Extra engineer equipment, anything like that. Recovery tools, anything like that. You got your toe pendle that we know and love right here. Business pin, but right there. This is actually really cool because this still works. So this tow cable will be attached to this and be helped to use towing vehicles. And it's got this winch here. You want to get a shot of it. That actually still rotates. If you guys can see that. You see me moving it? Yeah. So she, she still cranks really good. Um, so down here, will be access to your engine compartment. The engine was a Ford GA V8 gasoline engine, which would power this baby up to about 24 miles per hour. If you took off the speed, Governor, I reckon she could maybe hit 26, 28, maybe, because this was a heavier vehicle, because it was an engineer vehicle designed to tow things. So, you got your extra uh, tow bags back here. This baby will be towed, or more other stuff will be attached to it to be towed. You got the big crane, obviously, like I mentioned earlier. And then this little mountain, like I said, this little winch right here. And if you come all the way over here, this is where it's like a stowage basket, stowage bustle right here. Stowage basket, you can put extra rope, nylon, tools, bags, anything you want in there. Right here would be where your tail light would be. You'd have your blackout marker and your reverse lights and your tail lights. You can see over here as well. But that pretty much does it for the back, you guys. I just thought that was pretty interesting that that deal of the winch still worked. So uh, with that, we're going to go close out this video, guys. <laughs>